Good morning, my name is Randy Ruth and welcome to this edition of Your Pocket Mechanic. This morning I'd like to talk about multiplexing, vehicle multiplexing, module networking. I want to talk about what it is and what it does and is it really necessary? The modern vehicle is equipped with a lot of different modules. We have, for instance, the powertrain control module. The body control module. The anti-lock brakes control module. The Supplemental Restraint Control Module, or the Airbag Module. And many, many more, but we'll just use those four for the example. Now what multiplexing does is give the ability to for all these modules to communicate with each other, share information, and they sometimes have to share it with up to 11 different modules. And all of this is done over a twisted pair of wires called the CAN bus. So how does this work? How do these modules talk to each other? Yeah, let me give you an example. There are a lot of different sensors on vehicles. For example, we're going to use the vehicle speed sensor. The vehicle speed sensor, as the name implies, tells a computer or a module how fast the car is going. Now if you think about it, several modules could use this information. In the days past, before multiplexing, we would have to run a lot of wiring off this one sensor to each of these modules to provide that information, or we would have to have several sensors that did the same thing. So. How multiplexing works, we're going to say the vehicle speed sensor first sends this information to the powertrain control module. Now the powertrain control module can use this information, the vehicle speed, to help adjust the engine settings for the most optimum performance. From there, it can send the information, the vehicle speed information, over this twisted pair of wires, over the multiplex, onto the body control module. Now it too can use this information to adjust uh, the vehicle for different settings, like some vehicles have a wiper system built in that adjusts wiper speed to how fast the vehicle's going. So now we have two modules that have shared this information with each other. From there, it can go on to say the anti-lock brakes control module. Now the anti-lock brakes control module can use vehicle speed to Determine how fast the vehicle is going in the event an anti-lock brake event is needed. From there, over that twisted pair of wires, the vehicle speed can be sent on to the supplemental restraint control module or the airbag module so it knows how fast the vehicle is going in the event of a crash to deploy the airbags. So right now we have four modules that used information off one sensor. Now in times past, we would have had to run two wires from that sensor to each module. That's eight wires. That's a lot of wiring. But no, with multiplexing, we only need to send it to one module. Then over the network, each module can receive information, uh, share this information with each other without the need for a lot of wiring. So this answers the question, is it necessary? Well, yes. If you were a mechanic in years past, you knew the amount of wiring under the hood of a vehicle. It was a lot. Uh, some had this, this huge bundle that had nothing but wiring in it. Now, it's kind of funny. As cars have developed and we have all these modules and all these sensors, we have a lot less wiring than we used to because we don't need it. We're able to share information from module to module over a twisted pair of wires called the CAN bus. Now, all of this happens very quickly. That vehicle speed information I was talking about is shared with each module very in the blink of an eye. It updates itself several times a second. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of sensors in vehicles. Now, 
Oh, is all information from all sensors sent to all modules? Well, yeah. If it doesn't need it, it ignores it and passes it on down the line. Uh, say, for instance, the analog brake module sent a signal that an event occurred, that it needed to apply the analog brakes. Would the air conditioning control module need this information? No. It would get it and just say, hey, I don't need this. Pass it on to the next guy. So it works very well. The other beautiful thing about it is, what about a sensor failure? Let's say that vehicle speed sensor failed, and it's only reading zero miles an hour. The powertrain control module has a strategy built in that if a sensor fails, well, first thing it does is turn on the check engine light. But it can substitute a value based on the reading from other sensors. It can look at, say, throttle position sensor, air intake sensor, engine coolant sensor, and say, well, I'm getting zero. I don't think that's right. So I'm going to guess it's going about 15 miles an hour. It will pass that information on to the other modules. Otherwise, all these modules would shut down without that information. If, it was, if all these modules were getting a zero mile an hour signal, we would have four up to maybe five modules that wouldn't know what to do. So we do have strategy built in that can substitute values in the event of a failure. Is it necessary? To somebody unfamiliar with cars, it seems like a very complicated setup. It does, because it kind of removes the ability we used to have to diagnose our own cars. Now as a mechanic, from our point of view, it's great. We don't have all this wiring to deal with when we're working on a car anymore. We have very little wiring compared to days past, so it's become very helpful to us. Well, there you have it. There's multiplexing. I hope it answered some questions. That was a very basic lesson. I look forward to the next edition of Your Pocket Mechanic.